this video, we're going to talk about heaps. So all heaps are complete binary trees. As a reminder, what that means is the tree is full, meaning every non-leaf has the maximum number of children it can have up until the next to last level. And then all the leaves on the last level are all the way to the left. Now, if we have a min heap, every node in the heap contains an element that's smaller than any of its descendants. So the element is less than the left child, the right child, and that continues all the way through the entire heap. For a max heap, every node contains an element that's larger than any element contained in its subtree. Depending on which type of heap we have, either the min or the max element in the entire heap is at the root. And that gives us advantages for applications where we want that max or min element. And this allows us to have quick access to the smallest or largest element in a collection for applications where that's important. So here's an example of a max heap, and you can see that for every node in this heap, the element in that node is larger than any element contained in its subtree. So nine is at the root, and it's the largest element in the entire heap. Seven is larger than two and five. Eight is larger than any element in its subtree. It's larger than six, it's larger than three, and six is larger than four as well. And notice that this tree is complete. It's full through these first three levels, and the leaves are all the way to the left of the last level. So you'll notice in a max heap that there's no left to right order like we had with a BST. So here you have an eight in the left subtree, which would be correct for a BST, but then you have a two and a five and a seven in the right subtree. Now, even though eight is bigger than any of those values, there's no ordering left to right. The ordering is all top to bottom. And so that's perfectly acceptable. So here's an example of a min heap with the same elements. We have two is the smallest element in the heap. So it's at the root. Four is the smallest element in its subtree. Three is the smallest element in its subtree. And six is the smallest element in its subtree. Again, this is a complete tree that's full up until the last level. And then all the leaves on the bottom level are all the way to the left. So the next leaf would be added right here. Now heaps can have different shapes depending on the order that we add the elements. So here you can see this is also a valid heap. And notice all of the gray nodes have elements that are in different locations than in where they were in the heap to the left. So here four is a child of the root. Here four is on the second level, even though it's the second smallest element in the heap. Again, the, uh, the ordering is top to bottom. And so the heap property is maintained here. Every node contains an element that's smaller than anything in its subtree. The one thing that's consistent though, is that since two is the smallest element, two is always gonna be stored at the root if we have a heap of these elements. So let's add these elements to a min heap and we'll do this one column at a time just to give us some room. We add 12 at the root. It's the only element, so it's the smallest element. It's at the root. When we add one, it has to be the left child of 12 to keep this a complete tree. But notice we have an ordering problem. Since one is less than 12, we need to swap those. And now we're finished adding one to the heap. When we add 18, it's gonna be the right child of one and the ordering is fine there, so we leave it alone. And then we add 20, which is larger than 12. So since 12 is smaller than 20, we can leave this alone. Again, notice we added 20 as the leftmost possible leaf on this row. These first three nodes make up a full tree, and then adding this node to the left of 12 maintains the complete tree structure that's required for a heap. So now let's add the second column of values. So we add seven. Seven is less than 12, so it needs to be above 12 in a min heap. So we swap those. Then we add four. Again, we can't add any more in this subtree, so we need to add for as the left child of 18, again, maintaining a complete tree the entire time. Notice we add the node and then we deal with the order. And you'll see that when we look at the code that that's exactly what we do. So four is less than 18, so it needs to be above 18 in our heap. Then we add 10 and 10 completes the last level. So we have a full tree now and 10 is less than four. So it's in its correct location. And then finally we add a nine. This starts a new level. So we go all the way to the left the left child of the leftmost node. And since nine is less than 20, we need to swap those, but nine is not less than seven, seven is less than nine. So now we have our order maintained. Now our heaps are gonna be made up of nodes, just like a binary tree. And we're actually gonna use the binary tree to build our heap node from. So we're gonna have references to the element that's stored at that node, and then it's left and right children. But then the heap node is going to add a parent reference on top of that, because we need to do comparisons up and down. So here's what our class looks like. 
Our class heap node is going to extend binary tree node. It's going to add a parent member. And then our constructor is going to call the super constructor. And we'll initialize the parent to null. And then we have getters and setters. So this is what a min heap would look like. You can see that for each node, it has references to its left and right children, and then also back to its parent. Also, the parent reference for the root would be null, just like the left and right child references at a leaf would be null. So the interface for our heaps is going to add three methods to binary tree. The first is to add an element. Again, remember the binary tree didn't have an add element, and we want our add element to make sure that we add things correctly to the heap. And we have two elements dealing with the minimum. We can either remove it or we can find what it is and return that element. And remove element, just like add element, needs to make sure the properties of the heap is maintained once that minimum element is removed, meaning we have to find a new smallest element. Heaps allow us to do that very efficiently, and we'll see that when we take a look at the code. Our min heap class itself is going to extend the binary tree class we saw. So we're going to have all the binary tree methods, and we're also going to have references to the root and the mod count. The mod count is used for iterators to keep track of how many changes were made to the heap. We're not going to be focused on mod count and we'll actually ignore it for most of the implementation. Even though it's there, by this point, hopefully you understand why we have that. Our actual heap class, we're going to call it linked heap because we're going to use linked nodes to implement it. It's going to extend the binary tree class and it'll implement the heap interface so that we pull in those new methods. And it's going to add a new reference to the linked binary tree. And that's to the last node that was added to the heap. We're going to use last node for two things. First off, when we remove the min, we have to remove a node, and that's going to be the last node. So our remove method is going to go find that last node, take its element out, and then figure out where to put it in the heap, and we'll see how that works. And the other thing is, is that once we know where the last node added was, we can actually use that to determine where to add the next node, and we'll have a method to do that as well, which we'll see in the next video. So here's our min heap. Remember, there's a linked binary tree in there that has a reference to the root. And then our linked heap adds the last node reference. And that last node reference points to the last node that was added to the heap. And maybe saying last node added to the heap is not correct. It's the last node in the bottom level of the heap. That might be a better way to think about it, because when we add one more, we'll add our left child to this node, and that left child would be the last node. If we remove the min, then even though the min is at the root, this is the node we have to remove because we have to maintain it as a complete tree. And so in that case, this would be the last node, this would be removed, and we would have to put this element back into the tree and make sure that the heap ordering is maintained. And again, we'll see that once we start talking about how to add and remove elements in future videos.